everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review, and today's review is in association with MarvelousNews.com, your number one news source for everything Marvel. And today we're going to take a look at another of Hasbro's new Marvel Infinite Series three and a quarter inch uh, Marvel figures. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the new Grim Reaper figure. Um, this is part of Hasbro's new Infinite Series, which is basically just a rebranding of the Marvel Universe line. Yesterday we looked at Wasp, and today we're going to look at Grim Reaper. Uh, packaging is very uh, basically exactly the same that we saw with the Wasp figure, just different name on the packaging. But you know, basically, we're you know Hasbro is now using very generic packaging for this line, um, black with the Marvel logo up at the top, Infinite Series underneath that, and then some uh, Avengers symbols, Thor's hammer, Captain America star, Iron Man's helmet, and Hulk's fist underneath that, and then the figure clearly displayed on the uh, on the card back. And then on the back of the packaging, um, we have a picture of the figure along with a little brief bio, and then underneath that we have a look at the other figures in the wave. Okay, so let's get this figure open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the Grim Reaper figure outside of the packaging. And for the most part, I think this is a pretty nice figure. It's definitely nice to have another villain to add to your uh, Marvel Universe uh, Infinite Series line. Um, now, as I pointed out in the Wasp review, these are basically the exact same figures, we, type of figures we were getting in the Marvel Universe line. Um, we, the only difference is really with the packaging and the, and the actual rebranding to Infinite Series as opposed to Marvel Universe. But the figures themselves fit in perfectly with the older Marvel Universe figures and are the same design and everything. So this figure doesn't really come with any accessories. His uh, weapon is attached to his hand, obviously. Um, he has a cape, which is a vinyl material, has flexibility and everything, and looks pretty good. I like the sculpting on the cape. It's basically a light uh, purple type color, uh, not really any shading on the cape, but you do have some kind of texturing uh, to give it, and like the folds and everything are sculpted in. So the cape lo overall looks pretty nice. Now his bladed weapon um, is made with a very soft plastic and has a tendency, at least mine, you know, when it came out of the packaging was warped, so it was bent badly. Um, so that's something you want to watch for. Um, you can kind of bend it back in shape. I'll use a blow dryer trick or something if it's really bad. Um, now it's it's not really removable, the blade, at least you might be able to pull the blade part out. I haven't tried because I don't think it's supposed to be removable, but it does turn in it in there. So it, it has uh, just like with a wrist, you know, you can turn it. But again, I don't think the blade part is meant to be uh, removable. And again, I haven't really tried that hard because I don't want to break it. You can, if you pull really hard, you could probably pull it out, and I guess you could probably stick it back in. But again, it doesn't seem to be made to be removable. Now the cape itself is removable if you want to. You just pop his head off, take it off, and then pop his head back on. Now one thing I'll point out though is when you take the cape off, because the cape has this large kind of turtleneck type piece that goes around his neck. So when you take it off, his neck kind of is, looks a little long to me. So it's really up to you how you want to display him, but I think he looks much better with the cape on than with, with it off. Now, one other thing I want to point out with this figure, which is kind of odd, is the paint job. Basically, this is an all-black figure, except for the face and the, and the blade. But otherwise, it's basically all-black, and then the skull and crossbones on his chest. But they seem to, I guess, to get an added dimension. They've almost, it's not really a wash, but different parts of the body are, are a different shade of black so like you can see here in his midsection it's a much lighter almost grayish black um, but then like on his lower arms it's dark black um, so throughout the body you just kind of got this mixture of of blacks on it and so it looks a little strange especially like here on the legs you can see like the upper legs or that lighter color and then the lower legs are the darker color on the back it's all solid black and I think it looks better that way I think they should have just left it a solid black but you know on the top of his head again they kinda uh, given him that lighter color but then on his face it's the darker color so 
you know, again, it's not horrid or anything, but I think it would have looked better uh, if they either kind of mixed the washes in a little bit more um, or if they just made it a solid, solid color. Um, like I said, I like, I like the solid black on the back of them. So I just want to point that out. And the skull and crossbones looks, for the most part, pretty good. Um, it can look a little funny, like if you have his, because basically the skull is on his upper body and then the crossbones are on his lower body. So like if you have him looking upwards, then it looks a little funny because um, the skull is so far away from the crossbones. But if you just have him standing straight up, then it doesn't look too bad, especially with the cape on. Articulation, pretty standard what we've been seeing with these figures. Um, heads on a ball joint, ball hinge joint, so he can look up and he can look down really nice and he can look left and right with no problem. Um, even with the cape on, there's no, no restriction with the head movement. Um, arms are standard ball hinge joint at the shoulder, so he can stick his arms all the way out. He does have a tricep swivel, um, and then he's got a single hinged uh, at the elbows. And then he's got swivel at the wrists, including the blade, which also has the swivel. He has the midsection joint uh, swivel there. He has a little bit of a crunch there, but not a whole lot. And then he also has a waist swivel. He has the um, uh, bicep swivel. And legs are attached uh, with ball joints. So he can do the splits about that much. And he can do his legs back and forward pretty good. He's got double jointed knees, so he's got good bending at the knees. And then he has the calf swivel as well. And then he has the ankle pivot. So that's my review. Overall, I like this figure. I'm glad we're finally getting a, a Grim Reaper figure in this line. Um, the character has been getting a lot of uh, uh, attention in the pages of Uncanny Avengers, so it's definitely nice to be getting this character for the line. Uh, the only really gripes I have for it are, I think the paint job is a little off with the different uh, blacks kind of sprinkled throughout the body parts. You know, I think they could have done a better job of, of, of doing a wash on this figure or just doing a solid color. Um, but other than that, and that the blade is a very soft plastic, so it, it can easily get warped. But other than that, I, I like the figure. I like the face sculpt. I think the face sculpt's really good on this figure. Um, and I don't have any serious complaints with it. Articulation's definitely good. And for the most part, it looks very true to the character that we see in the comic books. Um, so, uh, this first wave of Marvel Infinite series is hitting shelves now, and E. Taylor's. So, if you want to pick them up, start looking now. And that's my review, and until next time, I'll check you later.